since 2003, there has been a very prominent viewpoint that's emerged from the work of Brack and colleagues on approximately 40 some brains of individuals with Parkinson's and uh, 60 some brains of individuals without Parkinson's. He stained them to determine the extent to which each of them had Lewy pathology and based on how little or how much Lewy pathology there was, he in fact and his team developed an idea that uh, proteins uh, begin in the areas where the staining is least and move uh, into areas of the brain where the staining becomes more prevalent and created what is referred to as the Brack hypothesis of pathology propagation with the idea that the pathology, once it appears, creates both uh, the abnormalities of uh, the, the uh, degeneration, so it would precede degeneration, and it would, of course, be important to induce the disease. So it was necessary and sufficient. Well, so what I have reviewed uh, in this presentation is the data, even including that which Brack himself and his team uh, used, to demonstrate that there is no relationship between how much amyloid accumulates in the brain and how much of a progression there is, nor there is much of any evidence to support the very core concept of a proteinopathy, where the more of a proteins you have, presumably in a toxic fashion, the more degeneration there is. So I reviewed all of that human data uh, uh, within and beyond the BRAC data to conclude that based on the data alone, there is no support for a propagation of uh, a pathology in a stereotypical fashion where the where the pathology would in fact precede the degeneration and where the degeneration of course uh, gives rise to specific clinical features that we recognize as Parkinson's. It's been a beautiful idea. It's incredibly elegant, but it is not supported by the data. And therefore uh, it has distracted us from that which is uh, perhaps invisible uh, because it cannot be measured in autopsy studies, which is that which has been lost in the process of these proteins being aggregated, the normal proteins. So I think it has created lines of research that attempt to explain Parkinson's and other neurodegenerative diseases as prion-like disorders because these proteins somehow are toxic and are actively replicated which is not supported by the studies on biophysics of alpha-synuclein or any other brain protein.